Hello everyone, I wish you a good day, a good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to SPAN Virtual Debates 2023 tournament for the 6th of April. Judge Mackey will be giving us feedback and announcing the winner at the end of the debate. Judge, please be sure to record your information in tabroom.com as soon as possible after the debate so that the teams can be advised of their next debate status. And I am the moderator and facilitator for the 2023 SPAN tournament and my name is Abhinaya, and Naveen is assisting me. I would like to read the following statement to you. The winning team is chosen based on their skill and effort, not on any preset NSS position. NSS clearly believes that humanity should continue to explore, develop, and settle space. However, NSS also believes that open and honest debate will facilitate that goal. It is important that space advocates understand and be able to express the anti-space case no statement by any debater or coach is an official position of NSS. Let us meet our debaters. The affirmative position is held by Team Phobos, named after the largest satellite orbiting the planet Mars. The team is coached by Thomas Maple. Team Phobos, please give us your name and the country you're representing. Hello, my name is Anastasia and I come from Romania. Hello, my name is Lana and I come from Romania. Hello, my name is Mircea and I also come from Romania. Hello, my name is Luciana and I am from Peru. Thank you. Uh, next, we will hear from Team Triton, named after the largest natural satellite orbiting the planet Neptune. The team is coached by Robert Powell. Team Triton, please give us your name and the country you are representing. Hi, my name is Daria and I am from Romania. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Musa from Romania. Hi, I'm Isabella and I'm representing Peru. My name is Sebastian and I'm from Peru. Thank you. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand in your participants icon on your screen. Please mute your mic unless you are speaking and only the presenting team and judge should turn on the videos unless directed by the moderator. Our debating format today follows the same format as in the practice tournament. Let us get started. We'll hear from the first speaker from Team Phobos representing the affirmative position for the 2023 resolution. Government funding of astronomical and planetary space projects should be prioritized to support humanity's survivability on Earth. Team Phobos, your first speaker may begin your affirmative intro. You have four minutes. Thank you for the recognition. Uh, hello, as previously mentioned, my name is Anastasia and I will be the first speaker of the affirmative team. I believe that a suitable way to start this debate would be by quoting uh, no one else but the NASA administrator, Bill Nelson, who says that all of us have the responsibility to protect our home planet. After all, it's the only one we have. Uh, I believe that all of us can relate to this. All of us have the same aim, survivability of humankind. However, we took two different paths. We, the affirmative team, believe that uh, government should be prioritizing the funding of uh, astronomical and planetary research in order for humans, humankind to survive in the future. Um, I would like to continue by presenting our team. So after me, Ilana will be following with uh, more in-depth arguments supporting our stance, followed by Mircea, who will be giving us a well-rounded rebuttal. And last but not least, Luciana will be summarizing the entire debate in a very diplomatic and nice way. Um, now, I would like to continue by uh, defining the terms of the resolution. First of all, when we will talk about governments, we will be tackling all the governments globally. However, most of our information is taken from NASA and we'll be targeting USA because this is the the widest database. Next in the line is astronomical and planetary. Uh, International Astronomical Union has uh, defined it as stellar objects and heavenly bodies that are naturally occurring physical identities or structures that exist within the observable universe. Next in line is human survivability, which implies the continuation of the human species. And Earth is the immediate planetary body without its atmosphere or inclusion of the atmosphere up to 100 kilometers. This definition was given by the US military. Now, let's cut to the chase. Uh, as previously mentioned, our stance is that the government should be prioritizing space research, and this benefits the human survivability. My argument will be based upon um, 
unpredictable and crisis situations that can be caused by the extraterrestrial space that can harm um, the entire humankind and that can lead us to no human survivability. And the very clear example for this is asteroids. Asteroids are unpredictable. Yes, we do have a lot of technologies for this, but they can still occur at unknown times. Um, there's a lot of research going on in NASA. Uh, one of them even claimed that um, there's an asteroid estimated to hit the Earth in 2046 with irreversible consequences. Um, and if we take the more current data, there is over 26,000 asteroids orbiting through Earth's uh, neighborhood yearly. Uh, of course, not all of them pose impact threat. However, there always need to be one miscalculation, one asteroid that wasn't seen by NASA's current technology for this to change. Um, of course, we have had um, successful missions in the past regarding this, even 2022, very current, very soon. Uh, the DART mission um, made a very important step towards, um, towards finding a solution for this. Um, there a great... Um, 85 meter long asteroid called Dimorphos has been sidetracked. But of course, this is not a solution. 85 meters is not a substantial um, length or um, it's not a substantial asteroid. This is what I mean. And if a bigger one occurs right now, we don't have the technologies to support ourselves, to help ourselves. Of course, this is all theories. Um, maybe if we invest more money, there will be like inter 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 interterrestrial uh, extraterrestrial calamities um, prevented. But maybe if we invest money in Earth, these theories are also as hypothetical. And we believe that these big threats um, need to be prioritized in favor of the ones that we can already tackle on the Earth. There have been crises in the past, the pandemics, the worst. We have managed to live through them. However, we have never faced a threat that came from outer space. And I believe we should invest into this. Thank you. Thank you. We begin a three minute prep time for the negative team to prepare a cross X. If the next team is ready to move on before the three minutes, please indicate to me and we will proceed.
speaker neg one of team Triton, please begin your two minute cross ex of F1. Okay, so I have a couple of questions for you. First of all, uh, where do you plan on taking money from? Because you said you want to take money, but you didn't mention where, from where. Um, of course, we would like to prioritize uh, space research over maybe other types of researches that are happening on Earth right now that do not um, necessitate immediate action. For example, healthcare, yes, we do need that. But there are other, um, for example, fossil fuels. We are trying to move away from that. The government is still spending a lot of money on fossil fuels. Maybe we can take from these things that are already worsening our situation on Earth and spend it into a space which only tries to do good. Okay, my next question is how much do you plan to spend? How much money do you plan on spending? Um, obviously enough in order for all these plans that our researchers have in mind. Um, we don't have a set sum right now. This is all theory talk right now. Okay, and my last question is, if a threat from outer space never attacked us, why should we invest in this? Um, I th believe that my sole argument, my, my base of the argument was that uh, threats from the outside world are unpredictable for us. And this is why we always need to be ready. Um, the way we can already tackle the problems right now that are happening on the earth, we can also have, we also need the possibility to tackle the extraterrestrial threats just in case. We never know. We are just humans. Okay, thank you. But what happens if, because there are so many problems on Earth happening. And what happens if we invest in something that we really don't know if it will happen in the future? Mm, I believe that right now the money going to Earth problems, I believe that the Earth problems right now are slowly getting better. And if you could please maybe mention some problems that you would spend money on in detriment of space ones, for example. Yeah, I'll give you some examples. For example, tsunamis or maybe hurricanes or even Sorry, earthquakes. That is a problem. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Meg one of Team Triton, please present your opening argument. You have four minutes. Hello, my name is Daria and I will be the first speaker of the negative team. The negative team would like to thank the NSS and Spandy Base program for this opportunity. Thank you also to the affirmative team, the moderators, and the judge for your participation. Now we agree that funding on astronomical and space science should be reprioritized to support human survivability on Earth. But I think this should be done by the government, shouldn't be done by the government. So we ask you to reject the affirmative resolution and support the use of private corporations to achieve these goals. Now I'm going to give you a short definition of what space uh, private space agencies are. Private space agencies are basically companies and organizations that are engaged in the development and operation of spacecraft and other technologies related to space exploration and research, but are owned and operated um, uh, by private independent corporations rather than the governmental one. So the negative team proposes the following. First of all, a United Nations subgroup called uh, UN Space Enterprises, which will be created to provide the reprioritized funding to the private space agencies. And second of all, this fund, the UN Space Enterprises will allocate funding to the most successful and efficient um, private space agency. Now we will give you four reasons why uh, we believe private uh, agencies uh, are better than, than the governmental ones. I will talk about the first two and my teammate Bianca will talk about the last two. Uh, first of all, um, we think private companies are more efficient and uh, are accomplishing more than NASA, as you said. And I'm going to quote uh, something that Andrew Follett stated in the National Review in 2021. James, um, Webb Space Telescope will finally launch after taxpayers have forked over $9.7 billion because it was originally supposed to launch in 2007 and on a budget of $500 million. And now that means that the project is over a decade um, behind the schedule and costing about 20 times its um, original budget. Moreover, the Hubble 
uh, space telescope was originally uh, intended to launch in 1983, but some technical issues didn't allow that. Um, so it was launched in 1990 uh, because the main mirror was incorrectly manufactured. Now it is hard to uh, imagine a better example of the private sector's amazing ability to outcome government by bureaucracy and mismanagement that um, NASA's planned shuttle replacement, the space launch, which was estimated to cost about per um, about $2 billion per flight. And in contrast, I'll give you an example. SpaceX uh, developed the Falcon 9 um, with a budget of on approximately uh, $300 million uh, in a little over four years. So that's really good. And my second argument is related to universalization, given the fact that private sectors are much efficient than the governmental ones. Um, they could work, also work on a bigger extent in order to uh, meet the needs of everyone on earth. And I'm going to quote again, as Whitman Cobb stated in 2019, as um, uh, with NASA, private industry has sufficient access to the technology to get to the moon, but I think they also have to demonstrate that their systems are fundamentally safe and reliable in order to contract paying customers. In, on the other hand, private companies have demonstrated their ability to move really fast, uh, incorporating design and technology uh, ch changes almost immediately. So giving this information we ask you to support our proposal Your time's up. thank you thank you ask one from team phobos please start your two minute process thank you so i will have a question you mentioned that you would um, propose a un subgroup for space and space enterprises well un is an intergovernmental unity how would this relate to your prioritization of space companies in this industry you, could you repeat, please, the last part of your sentence? Um, UN is an intergovernmental um, entity. How would this relate to your prioritization of private companies in space exploration? What would they have to do with it? Well, basically, this would be our idea of uh, creating a private uh, company in order to um, reprioritize human survivability on Earth, because as I said before, we both agree that um, uh, there must be funding of astronomical and space science projects to reprioritize space human survivability. So basically, we, um, we do not agree with the solution, but we agree with the problems. However, I still don't understand it. You mentioned UN. UN is intergovernmental. It has no, to do with and as I said, is United Nations, yes. Yes, it's an intergovernmental organization. Governments, uh, they're not private. They're not the private sector. That's a name that's not, it, it's not necessary to involve the government in this. It's just a name. And as, as I said, um, this has to do with um, the private space agency that we want to create in order to um, allocate fundings. And where would this agency get its money from? Well, it's a space agency, a, a private space agency, and they work on this because um, they... Your time's up. Ask two of Team Phobos now to offer the second argument for the affirmative team. You have four minutes. Hello, my name is Ilana. I will present to you the second argument of the affirmative team. First of all, let's begin by thinking about space. As Essa describes it, space is one of the most extreme environments imaginable. Because it is so different from Earth, a completely new mindset is being used when regarding the requirements for missions in such an environment. Space presents plenty of limitation. How limitations. However, it is through these limitations themselves that human humanity has managed to reach evolutionary peaks. Now I'll begin describing to you some technologies discovered because of different astronomical projects that change the world. One of them is the CAT scan, developed for the Apollo research pro program, proved so valuable as a medical diagnostic tool that it was awarded the 1979 Nobel Prize in Medicine. 
Other inventions that have improved life on Earth are the water purification systems, artificial limbs, and baby formula, just to name a few. Moreover, we can take a look at projects such as Melissa. Melissa is a project developed by ESA that supports regenerative life support systems that in turn support planetary and astronomical research projects. These projects offer solutions to stop excessively using and start regenerating resources such as water and food. This is important to human survivability since according to UNICEF, almost two thirds of the world's population is experiencing severe water scarcity for at least one month each year. Therefore, our continuous fight against climate change, uh, these projects might be the key to learn how to survive on um, the ever dwindling resources. Second of all, these technologies stand as a symbol of the next human, fa uh, next human phase of uh, development, uh, which is universalization. The universalization, as defined by Lorna Jean Edmonds, marked the transition from nation states to a single worldview of humanity, where all individuals are treated fairly. Technologies aren't bound to the borders of any countries uh, so that people worldwide can use them, breaking the visible and invisible barriers separating them. Third of all, the reason the funding uh, for space projects should come from the government is the following. Space projects are very costly. Furthermore, federal agencies have far more funds available. Designating a greater amount of money to astronomical and planetary space projects will lead to a more improvements on Earth. Moreover, the government represents the people and it should prioritize investments in this kind of research in order to draw attention towards them. An investment of money in this case uh, from the government will lead to an investment of human resources, supporting highly skilled jobs, fueling technology advancements and supporting the economy. Lastly, in a discussion about human survivability, when Nick Bostrom at Oxford University defined an existential catastrophe, he described it as one which ex extinguishes Earth originating intelligent life or permanently destroys a substantial, a substantial part of its potential. Now, I will read you the following phrase from Scientific American describing the Apollo 8 mission. For all the risk and effort involved, all the money America spent, all the symbolism about attaining the impossible, the sight of the tiny blue planet from deep space is probably the Apollo program's uh, greatest gift to us. The shot of Earth rise has remained one of the most important uh, photographs of all time. Doesn't this embody the human potential? And if we don't prioritize it, do we not chip away at the meaning of supporting human survivability? Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Now we will have a neck two of Team Titan for a two minute cross. -head. Hello, so I have a couple of questions for you. Um, so it kind of seemed to me that I just heard facts, but not really an option or like a solution. So my question to you is, um, how do you plan to action in order to promote universalization? Uh, could, you, could you, what kind of actions are you referring to? Solutions. Uh, what solutions do you? Uh, what solutions do you have? Well, I didn't mean that in that sense. I meant that um, as a whole, space explorations uh, marks uh, human universalization, that it stands as a symbol, that is that it as a whole uh, means uh, is a step of universalization. Um, okay, and how do you think the government represents people? Well, what I meant by that is that uh, the, 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 in the government is usually um, the people who okay. have some okay. power. It's okay. I have, that. I have another question. So um, can you prove that reprioritizing the government, um, the government fundings will give you enough money? Uh, I, it depends what you consider enough money. Perhaps for some projects, there will never be enough money, but there is certainly more money and more money will help uh, projects develop better and will bring more improvements, uh, as I said, to humanity and possibly its uh, chance to survive. Um, so you don't kind of have an idea of how much money will be necessary? No, it's, it depends from project 
project. I cannot estimate that at the moment. Uh, your time is up. Thank you. Uh, next two of Team Triton, please present your second argument. Okay, so um, hello everyone. My name is Bianca and I'll be the second speaker of the negative team. So it, as it has been stated before, we partially agree with the resolution. That means that we believe um, that funding of astronomical and planetary space projects should be prioritized to support human survivability on Earth. However, we do not believe that should be done by private agency. We believe that that should be done by private agencies and not the government. So our third argument is that space uh, privatization spurs innovation. In recent years, technologies like artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and blockchain have transformed the business world with new efficiency and insight. Soon, they will have a similar effect on how we expand our knowledge of outer space, reducing costs while gathering and processing critical information with expanding speed and scale. Uh, Naeem Altab, the CTO for Space Industry Tech at IBM, stated that, an, and I quote, a new space age is dawning and the business world is helping drive it. In addition to business process innovation, technological advances uh, by the private commercial sector are modernizing, modernizing uh, traditional and costly uh, space practices by reusing rockets and building more efficient spacecraft, reducing per launch costs. Um, our last argument is that private companies are surpassing the government in advancements. Rather than powerful nations guided by presidents, uh, the competitors in this race uh, are tech startups and private businesses spearheads, spearheaded by billionaire entrepreneurs. A crowded field, SpaceX, Blue Origin, Vigilo Airspace, Virgin Galactic, uh, not only has a number of private companies engaged um, in space exploration grown remarkably in uh, recent years, but these companies are quick, quickly besting their government-sponsored competitors. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Chris Levicki, CEO and president of Planetary Resources, tells Futurism, Futurism that, and I state, uh, we're starting to see advances made by private entities that are, that are more significant than any um, advances in the last three years that were made by the government. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin, and Tesla CEO Elon Musk, SpaceX, mm -hmm. are arguably the two companies that are setting uh, the pace. In November 2015, the former completed the first successful vertical rocket landing after sending their new Shepard 100 kilometers into the air. The government was never, able, was never able to build reusable rockets, but now two private companies within the space of the same year um, have done that, points out Neviki. CEO and president of Planetary Resources. Not only are private companies already surpassing uh, their government counterparts, several are poisoned to widen their lead in the coming months and years. If it all goes according to plan, when SpaceX Falcon Heavy launches in September, it will take the title of the more, world's most powerful rocket away um, from NASA's Saturn V. Levicki explains that the way that SpaceX planetary resources, I quote, uh, the way that SpaceX planetary resources or Virgin Galactic approaches space exploration is very different from NASA or the Air Force. Private companies aren't beholden to the same slow processes that often stall um, government projects and they can um, secure or reallocate funding much more swiftly if need be. That was my speech. Thank you. Uh, team Phobos, please begin your two minute class. Thank you very much. So I would like to um, ask you, you have uh, mentioned uh, the parallel between space projects um, being created by private sections versus those created by governments. But uh, I don't think that, it, that this is what the motion was about. The motion was about uh, space projects in general, whether they are private or governmental, and uh, that government uh, money should be coming from them. So what a difference does it make if the money comes from a private sector of, uh, or the government to support a certain project? So um, we have stated, me and my colleague, that uh, private companies are surpassing the government in advancements, um, that they are more efficient, that they support innovation. So we think that they will be better to um, promote human survivability and universalization. But uh, I don't understand, how, I, how are they more efficient? In what sense? Uh, well, my colleague Daria uh, talked about that in her speech. Uh, could you restate that, please? Um, wait. 
So uh, for example, the James Webb Space Telescope, which will finally launch uh, after it was supposed to launch in 2007 with a budget over $500 billion, um, or the Hubble Space Telescope, which was originally intended to launch in 1983. Okay, I understand, but wasn't that a technical issue? Like, wasn't the money delivered in time or what happened? Was it really the government's fault? The government uh, was, in this case, is just supposed to send the funds to fund, to prioritize investment. And I think yes. the issues you are um, talking about uh, come rather from the companies that develop the project. Well, given that uh, these projects are, are made okay, by the government. Up. Thank you. Uh, Negri, please present your rebuttal. You have four minutes. Uh, well, hi everyone. My name is Sebastian. Uh, the negative team's position is that private space companies are better able to meet the objectives uh, outlined by the affirmative team than are the government program uh, that they proposed. Uh, Naima Tav, CTO for IBM, has supported this view, stating that uh, so new space aging is done and the business world is helping to drive it. Privatization of space exploration can lead to increased competition and efficiency, driving down costs and accelerating innovation. For example, the SpaceX development of useful rockets has reduced the cost of launching payloads into the space and made space exploration more accessible to a wider range of organizations. Moreover, the development of space technologies by private companies has the potential to create new industries and generate economic growth. In recent times, uh, there has been a remarkable increase in the number of private companies involved in space exploration, such as SpaceX or Blue Origin. Uh, what's more, these companies are swiftly surpassing their government-sponsored competitors. According to Chris Lewicki, CEO and President of Planetary Resources, private entities are making progress that surpasses anything achieved uh, by the government in the last years. Following that, in 2016, Bezos' firm uh, accomplished a groundbreaking achievement when they successfully relaunched and relanded a rocket that has been used in previously, making the first uh, to do so. Experts uh, now say that some companies are surpassing uh, government companies. Uh, private enterprises are not only outpassing their government counterparts, but also expect to expand their lead in the upcoming months and years. One example of the benefits of space exploration is the development of GPS technology. This technology has been pushed to its current level by private corporations, not government. Already, SpaceX made GPS information available to the Ukraine. This is a clear example of private enterprises' uh, fast response as, the, as to the slow decision-making progress in government. In summary, privatization of space exploration uh, can spur innovation and bring about uh, significant economic benefits. In addition to that, space exploration has the potential to lead to important discoveries and advances in various fields. Uh, while also providing us with knowledge that can help us address environmental challenges in Earth. The development of technologies that for space exploration has also resulted in spin of benefits for war various industries, such as UPS technology, as I mentioned before. So we ask you to reject the affirmative resolution and accept the negative counter plan that uses private companies to benefit human survivability on Earth. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have a two minute prep time.
time's up. Uh, next, ask three of Team Phobos, please present your four minute rebuttal. Hello, my name is Mircha and I'm the third speaker of the affirmative side, so I'm in charge of the affirmative rebuttal. I would like to begin by acknowledging the negative team's arguments. And so, firstly, I'd like to say that the negative side mentioned that private sectors is a better and more efficient way of funding space and astronomical projects. They did that only, but only by giving an example. And so they said that the Hubble telescope had a 10 year delay uh, due to some technical issues. And so they did not refer to the money. And so you might as well say that technical issues might appear at the private company as well. Second, they didn't mention how they get the money. And so as my, as the first speaker of the affirmative side, as in the cross X, they cannot be related to governmental, uh, to the government. And so there is a big question, how do they get the money? And now I'd like to defend our side, our side and say that NASA is about people. So we all know how NASA gets its money. It gets from the Congress and so it gets from the people. But given the fact that NASA was one of the first government companies out there that dealt with space, and so they uh, participated in the space race with the, uh, the Russians, the, uh, the Russians, and they won. And so when they won, everyone was happy about it, and they didn't give, uh, they didn't care much about the money. And so you might say that NASA is about the people. Given the fact also that it is one of the first companies out there dealing with space, pro space uh, problems, you can say that it has a bigger database. And so they have more information about how space works and they um, also have a lot of staff. And so dealing with private, private sectors is, um, um, it's a delicate manner because uh, private companies are only, um, they have few CEOs, you may just have one. And so these CEOs can do basically whatever they want in these companies. And taking an example, SpaceX, the SpaceX CEO, Elon Musk, why, when, they, when he bought Twitter, they, he fired 80% of the staff. And so you might say that he can do the same thing on SpaceX or other uh, private companies dealing with space problems. And so given the fact that they will have less staff, uh, the, they will have more computers going on there. And so what should we do with that people? They will have no jobs and they will not help the economy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We pause for a two minute prep time.
times up. Next four of Team Titan, please present your four minute summary. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Isabella and I'll be representing the last speaker for the negative side today. I'll present to you two reasons in which proves that the private sector should be the ones in charge. Now let's start by revising our arguments. Like it's been stated previously by my teammates, it's proven that private companies have shown a better performance in comparison to NASA. And I'm not the one saying that, but also many other websites and studies made along the years. One of them being National Review in their article called um, Private Sectors are the Key for Space Exploration. And stated that NASA is one of the and is one known for being over budget on their programs. For example, like the ISS, the International Space Station, are massively over budget. So the negative, the third negative, actually said, in quote, it gets from people. Yes, it gets from people, but it also costs a lot of money, which gets from people. The cost, for example, in this project were initially projected to be $12 billion, but the bill ultimately reached the stunning number of $100 billion. And also the American taxpayers paid for about 84% of that. <laughs> and the second reason being that private companies are surpassing the government's advances, like my partner Bianca said. A clear example being um, the space suits project. For example, NASA has been working on a new spacesuit project for about 14 years and it hasn't even completed yet. While SpaceX, on the other hand, in less than 11 years was able to do it. And also taking into account that other 26 different companies are working on the same. So why can NASA do it? As SpaceX Elon Musk has rightly noted that NASA has too many cooks in the kitchen. So this one, I wanted to refer more to the, I believe, second negative, um, she said that, why should it matter? Why can NASA not be able to do it? Well, let me tell you why, because of this. If we put it right, like we click it, we said that um, NASA has too many people working in the same field. As for private sectors, it comes easier to manage organization better because we have less people working for a same project. Now, we also, we also want to believe that, we, that even though NASA is the biggest space industry, we should take in consideration that other entities. The first affirmative speaker never gave the information. She, on, she only stated that it, an assumption, like a circumstantial way. So we don't have any reason to believe her. Why don't we have any reason to invest in something that our insured can attack us? The affirmative team did not address my argu their arguments in which said that we don't agree with the resolution, but we do agree with the problem, which is don't with the solution. Now, um, to sum everything I've stated previously, we believe that we should prioritize space projects but not with the government founding. We, we should use the private sector one. Now, in case we would, so in that case, we'll be able to accomplish way more things in a shorter amount of time, like private industry have shown previously. And also while working in other programs with universalization and programs that can promote actually human survivability here on earth. It's important to recognize that we as a negative team, we have presented a counterpoint. And do, to all of these points and defensive Thank arguments you. we present. <laughs> Your time, up. Thank you. Uh, finally, we have asked four of Team Phobos to present their final summary. Before continuing, we would like to thank the NSS for putting up today's debate and Team Triton for their performance. We reaffirm our position in favor of the resolution that states that government founding of astronomical and planetary space science progress should be prioritized to support humanity's survivability on Earth. To defend our position, I'll present and reinforce the points mentioned before. The first argument we exposed was related to how astronomical and planetary investigation projects will help in the prevention 
and recollection of information about crisis situations. On Earth, there are over 26,000 asteroids circulating through Earth's neighborhood. And even though most of them, as the other team said, possess no impact threat, there is still a notable fraction of them called potentially hardest asteroids. And a great example of how these asteroids can be traced is the DART mission. This gathering of information is crucial if we want or if we are looking to protect and support the survivability humans will have on Earth. The second argument our team discussed was about the essential impact of space technological advances on humanity's quality, quality uh, of life and survivability and universalization. Also, how space presents plenty of limitations. However, it is through these restrictions and limitations that we humanity have managed to reach evolutionary peaks. peaks sorry. CAT scan, LED lights, water purification systems, artificial limbs, are just some of the inventions that had come out as a result. Giving light on disaster responses, medical research, and more. The money spent on space exploration creates jobs, jump starts businesses, etc. Having a really great impact on their economies, it supports highly skilled jobs, fuels technology advancements, and creates business opportunities that feed back into the economy. Moreover, the other team wasn't solid on the first cross -ex. They talk about creating a private space organization within the UN, even though the UN is an intergovernmental organization. So if they want to keep this in the private sector, why would they involve governments? Also, how would they get money from? Where would they get this money from? They say private sector would found it, but which companies or organizations they will get this money from. It is also important to mention that all their speeches were about how the private sector should take a visible position in investments. But the purpose of this debate was to profoundly talk about why we should or should not prioritize governmental funding of astronomical and planetary space size projects. To uh, support human survivability. Basically, they said that private space projects outperform the government, and we, Team Phobos, are pretty sure this motion, this was not what the motion was about. They have also said that they agree with the purpose of this motion, but not with the motion. So, okay. We get that, but rather than rather than saying that private that, that private investment should take place, why do we why won't we talk about um, if we if it should be prioritized or not? I think that was or we Tim Fogels think that was the main point, the main reason of this debate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Judge Maggie, would you like a couple of minutes before you offer your feedback and the winning team? Yes, please. Um, I'm going to mute my camera for just a couple minutes and, and make a decision and type some comments and then I'll come right back, okay? Okay. Please be quick. Thank you. Thank you.
George Mackey. I hope you have your uh, session. I so there's a lot of numbers to add up, so I'm just doing some math. But yes, I have a decision. I just needed to, in order to enter the ballot, I have to add up everyone's scores, and there's a lot of sub numbers. So just give me just a second, if that's okay. Otherwise, oh, I can okay. make a decision and then enter the ballot afterwards, whichever is your preference. Uh, you could probably do the ballot later if you have a clear cut decision on who the winner is. Okay, I just wasn't sure because the, the email we got said to enter the ballot right away because they need it for the next round. So I just didn't want to. Uh, yeah, you can take a few minutes after the debate. It's okay, all right. Okay, I just I didn't want to hold anybody up. Okay. Um, okay. Congratulations to both sides. This was a, a really lovely debate. Um, and I really enjoyed the opportunity to judge all of you. Um, you are all extremely good speakers um, and are, are clearly very thoughtful about your positions. Um, I do end up voting negative for Team Triton. I think that the negative has crafted a really interesting strategy here, um, and it took the AF a little while to sort of figure out the, the moving parts of it, and ultimately um, the negative does a better job of persuading me um, on, the, on the sort of agree with the um, harm but disagree with the solution strategy, um, and I think um, that um, the negatives position, which says that we should prioritize um, these issues, but it shouldn't be government. So they're really disagreeing with the, the strongly with the first word of the resolution, um, while perhaps agreeing with with a large portion of the rest of it um, is a is an interesting strategy. And it's it's pretty strategic because it allows the negative um, to agree with with whole swaths of the initial affirmatives case um, without and then creating one point of disagreement. Um, and I thought that the AF um, ultimately did a, a pretty good job in the end of, of sort of coming up with some some points of disagreement with that strategy. I thought um, that the the um, sorry, the first negative rebuttal, Mirsa, um, did a great job of coming up with some um, thoughts about why privatization would not be a good strategy. It, we shouldn't prioritize um, non governmental approaches. Um, but that they sort of didn't come together at the end of the debate. And I thought that the negative um, had better evidence on this question. So um, the affirmative um, raised some good questions about, you know, is that funding long term? Um, are companies um, like SpaceX, should we be concerned that they're going to do things like uh, Elon Musk did at Twitter? Those are all questions that I had for sure. Um, but they they didn't have research to sort of support those questions. Um, and that qu those questions didn't end up being um, the focus of the final rebuttal. Um, the, the sort of overall advice um, I would give to the AFT team um, is when the negative has a strategy like this, you don't need to retread ground that they agree with. So, um, sorry, the last speech, uh, Luciana, I thought you were extremely persuasive um, and, and a really good speaker, but I think that you should flip the sort of focus of your speech. So the last 30 seconds was like where the debate was at. And I want you to make that the whole speech. So the last 30 seconds where you're like, you know, I have two concerns. Number one is like, is this funding effective and long-term? And number two is like, have they actually really disagreed with us? Like, is this a disagreement with the resolution? Is this a disagreement with our affirmative position? Maybe it's not. Is this an effective, like, is this enough of a reason to vote negative? I want that to be the whole final rebuttal. You don't need to, to sort of read um, what you would ordinarily be trying to persuade me on, on the benefits of research generally, right? Like, I think that I definitely agree with the affirmative um, that there are lots of benefits of, of space research, but I think so does the negative. And so um, what you need to do is you need to just focus on that point of disagreement. And I think there are sort of two strategies for disagreeing um, with a strategy like this. And I thought that the AF touches on both of those briefly at the at the very end of the speech. One is to to disagree with the fundamental position. So say, no, it should be government funded. Um, and that is is one of the strategies you can pursue. The other is to sort of say, um, this is not a strategy that dis disagrees with us, that there's not a substantial enough disagreement to vote negative, um, that if at the end of the debate you think um, that, you know, private space research is good, that's fine, but it's not a reason the government space research is bad and that it's the negatives job to prove that the government shouldn't prioritize space research that private companies should prioritize space research is not a response to whether government companies or whether governments should as well does that make sense so it's like it's not a reason um to not have governments prioritize it and so um i think 
pursuing either or both of those strategies a little bit earlier in the debate and making that the focus of your arguments. And I, I probably vote affirmative. I'm not sure, you know, how much I think um, if debated out as best as possible, I think this negative strategy is is um, like a, a an effective response to the F, but as presented in this debate, the negative has provided um, significant evidence um, for why um, it's a more effective strategy. And um, the affirmative doesn't sort of force me to choose, or, or sorry, the affirmative doesn't say that I'm not forced to choose between those two strategies. Um, and um, I think so, I, I ultimately think in this particular debate um, that I agree that research should happen, um, but I think it should happen not at the governmental level. And so I disagree with the word, sort of the word government or the government prioritization of the affirmative. Um, I'm happy to answer questions because um, this debate's pretty interesting. And I think, um, you know, probably is a little bit different than some of the debates that you've had or some of the practice debates. Um, so if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I've also written um, a pretty significant number of comments um, on the ballot that goes to you all, the like tab room ballot. Um, and if you need me to email that to you later as well, just let me know. Um, but I'm I'm available to to help in any way possible. I'm gonna put my email in the chat just in case anybody needs to reach me. It's pretty easy. So that is me. Um, so if you have any questions later on or as you prepare for other debates or just as you're thinking about or reflecting on the debate, feel free to shoot me an email and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, so, no debater has any questions. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Judge and debaters. It was wonderful. Like, uh, thank you for participating in the 2023 Fun Debate Tournament. Judge, please uh, enter your scores in the tab room. You can take your time. Watch the tab room and your email to see when the position you will represent if your team is continuing on the debates. Uh, this fun debates program would not be possible without the student debaters, coaches, hosts, judges, and moderators. Thanks to one and all, and have a great day. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.